During excavations between April and August this year, Guard Archaeology found evidence of early settlement near Honeybury Crescent in Raptree. This presentation will cover the preliminary results from the excavations of this site. The excavation has been completed, however post-excavation work on the assemblage and samples has not yet started. So I am going to talk about the results and conclusions we can draw at this point and give a brief introduction to the archaeology and artefacts we found. The site is located on the eastern edge of Rattree and is land that was previously used for pasture and livestock. It has a significant slope at ground level with a 10 metre difference from the higher northern end to the lower southern end. It is surrounded by a housing estate to its north and northeast and a tree belt to its west and southwest. Perth and Kinross Trust have been involved with the site since the archaeological evaluation of the area and offered archaeological guidance throughout the excavation and the work was commissioned by GS Brown Construction. There were no previously known archaeological remains within the proposed development area. However, when Guard Archaeology carried out an archaeological evaluation of the site in July 2020, 52 features were revealed. This, these consisted of pits, post holes and linear features, with some of these features containing prehistoric pottery. Previously known archaeological remains within the surrounding area of the site include a kist burial and possible souterrain identified in Blair Gowery see the top left arrow, and the Neolithic Cursus monument, the Cleveland Dyke, see the bottom left arrow. The arrow in the top right is where the site is. Close to the site, a palisaded enclosure and pit circle at Welton has been identified in the past, as well as the Milton of Rattery Cursus and enclosed settlement, see the bottom right arrow and the aerial photograph. In the photograph, you can see two lines of pits which are defining the Neolithic cursus. Many of these previously known sites have not been invasively excavated and therefore the post-excavation work for the Honeybury site will be able to date with certainty when the locality was settled. Nine identifiable post-built roundhouses of varying construction types were found across the site a metal working furnace, a possible cairn deposit, and many more pits and post holes. We found features suggesting the presence of metal working activities, prehistoric pottery, and even some charred wood from a prehistoric context. The structures have been identified as fitting into two different types. There are four that would have been post-built structures with curvilinear ring grooves around their external perimeters, and two, possibly three, that are smaller structures made up of rings of posts. On the survey plan, you can see in blue the clusters of features that show where the structures are evident across the site. During excavation, the site was split into areas. We found no archaeology in area three, However, areas 1, 2, 4 and 5 had archaeological features. In the following slides, I will refer to the area from which the structure discussed came from. Areas 1 and 5 may have been more popular for buildings because of their more sheltered location in the landscape, this being the topographically lower southwestern end of the site. The roundhouses on the site fit with the typical layout of roundhouse found in Bronze Age Scotland. They are between 8 and 10 metres in diameter and they have possible entrances to the south and southeast. Structure 618 is the most compl complex structure. It was in Area 5 in the lowest and most southwesterly corner of the site. The structure comprised of a primary series of post holes and pits that created external and internal post rings, as well as an intermittently surviving ring ditch that can be seen in the north. At a later date, two pits shown in, the light, in light blue on the survey plan truncated some of these post holes. The spread of all the features suggests the structure had an opening at the southeastern end. You can see on the mid-excavation plan photograph of the structure that there is evidence that the structure was burnt down and a charcoal-rich deposit is still visible. This is the only structure on the site that shows evidence of having been burnt down. 
After this primary phase of the building, the structure was rebuilt in a different architectural tradition, and at this point the wall of the structure was supported by stones, some of which you can still see in the photograph. The use of stones in this curbing technique is not visible in any of the other structures on the site and is possibly an example of another Bronze Age type of layout called a ring bank. A ring bank structure would have had combinations of earth and turf and stone in a low circular bank that would support the roof. A sizeable piece of charred wood measuring 24 by 11 by 10 centimetres was found internal to the ring ditch before it has been fully analysed, we can only say for certain that it is oak, but a date will be given during post-excavation analysis. Structure 414. The second structure that was found in Area 5 was made up of a ring gully and large post holes, several of which had cobble packing stones. This roundhouse included an area possibly used as a hearth in the centre of the structure. The possible hearth feature was not substantial, but the location and evidence of burning suggested it was used as a hearth. Intercutting features suggest that this structure was also used in multiple phases. The ring gully visible with this structure was possibly used to support wattle panels as walling and fragments of daub were recovered from several contexts across the site. Structure 971. This structure was also used in multiple phases. In the survey image, you can see two rings of post holes in brown, as well as a ring ditch in blue, and a possible second internal heavily truncated ring ditch also in blue. You can see the shallow outer ring ditch in the planned photograph, which was taken during excavation of the structure. In the centre of the structure, there is also evidence of burning, possibly from where there would have been a hearth. Structure 424. In Area 1, the most significant structure excavated was an arc of large post pits, several of which contained sub-rounded cobble packing stones. This structure is different from the others on the site, as it was located in a natural dip in the topography and there aren't any significant reuse phases as can be seen with the other roundhouse structures on the site. There is also no ring ditch or gully evidence suggesting it was following a different construction type. In structure 424 we found a possible piece of Neolithic grooved ware pottery suggesting that this structure may be older, older than the others on the site. Also in Area 1 was a large inverted vessel made from a rough fabric and possibly dating to the late early to middle Bronze Age. You can see the pot in situ in the top left photograph and a detailed photo of some of the rim sherds of the pot. The pot is shown as the pink triangle in the survey plan and the cairn material covered the large spread that is shown in blue beside the pot. The pot um, Stratigraphically above structure 424 and beside but not encompassing the inverted pot, there was a deposit of possible cairn material. You can see a during excavation photograph here. Beneath and amongst this deposit, there was a large amount of prehistoric pottery. There was not a substantial amount of burnt bone or carbonised vegetation in the same context as the inverted pot or in the deposit below the cairn material. So we can't deter determine the use of the pottery and we will have to rely on post-excavation analysis to properly date and explain the function of these features. Evidence of metalworking. Oh. There was a hearth in the northwest quarter of area two um, it was a double flue metal working hearth and it was identified as being further away by, from many of the roundhouse structures I've just talked about. Within the same area of the site, but in a different feature, we found two fragments from a possible tuer. A tuer is a tube that is used when attempting to blow more air into a furnace or hearth to increase the temperature. Here is a video of field archaeologist Joshua finding one of the fragments of the tuyere. This tuyere is made from clay and was found in a probable waste pit alongside pottery, daub and slag. 
The slag found on the site appears to be Iron Age. However, at this stage, most before post-excavation analysis, we can't say for certain that the metalworking debris dates to the Iron Age. Simple post-ring structures. Two, possibly three, small post-ring structures can be identified on the site. They are simple structures with few internal features and no obvious hearths. The absence of more related features may have been caused by ploughing, removing evidence, and it is possible that these are the only remnants of larger structures and the other, other features forming the structure have not survived. The plan photograph of structure 282 shows how sparse the structure is in comparison to the more complex roundhouse structures on the site. Structure 389, as seen in the survey plan, is not as complex as the roundhouses that have been identified. However, it is more similar in design to the roundhouses than to the simple post ring structures and is therefore possibly a heavily truncated roundhouse which has lost its ring groove that we saw in the other survey plans for the other roundhouses on the site. Reuse of structures. Many of the structures have been identified as having been reused. Internal adaptations or changes in function are evident in structures 414 and 618. Large kidney bean shaped pits or deposits can be seen internally on both sides of these structures. The, these features truncate post holes, which suggests they came for, with a later phase of use of the buildings. See the green pits in stru structure 414 and the light blue shapes in 618. These pits or deposits could represent areas of er erosion, perhaps where animals have trampled the soil. This could suggest an interesting change in function to the previous domestic use of the buildings. Prehistoric roundhouses identified in Scotland included turf, timber and stone as construction materials. As previously shown, Honeybury has evidence of structures that used wattle and daub construction. See the planned photograph of structure 414. A possible ring bank stone and turf construction type. See the planned photograph of structure 618. And simple post-built structures with some substantial sized post holes with packing stones for extra support. See the detailed photograph of the packing stones just there. The presence of an early settlement at Rattree is unsurprising as the locality has many identified prehistoric archaeological remains. Post-excavation work on the site will present more precise and informed dates for the structures and analysis of the pottery, chuair and slag can ascertain if the, if the current projected dates are correct. From the features excavated, it is safe to say that the area was settled in prehistory with many of the structures being of Bronze Age construction types and also showing signs of reuse over time. The work at Honeybury will support the already identified prehistoric archaeology around Rattree and tell us when settlement developed in the area. Radiocarbon dating results and analysis of the finds will help us understand the possible functions and dates of the structures. They will also aid our interpretation of the development of the site as the structures on the site are Bronze Age in design, but it is possible the area was settled from the late Neolithic into the Bronze Age.